Okay, today we will be going through the process of inserting profile IPs, that is profile intersection points within Roads View. So what we have is we've got a topo job here with an alignment which has one curve and when I select the alignment and click on the horizontal IP it tells me that the speed value of that particular curve is 75 kilometres per hour based on Osro standards. Okay. So that, just keep that in mind when we go into Rose View. So to go into Rose View, we go up to Design and then select Roads. There's my alignment, line one. Open it and it will display the road panel. And in the roads panel, we have three different sections. One is the plan view. Another one is the cross section view. And down the bottom here, we have our profile view. So the first thing one does is go down to the red hot button or the display settings down the bottom of your screen and then select profile. So what we're going to do is display leaders, design levels, natural levels, any level differences, offset stations, the IPs or PIs as they call it, curve links, high and low points and grades. And we've applied by default, it's normally a one-to-one -one vertical exaggeration, but I've applied a five-to-one one, five one vertical exaggeration just to amplify the natural surface, so to speak. Okay, so we could click OK to that. Now, to create IPs, just click down in a blank area down here on the screen to bring it up in the menu view, and you'll see as you click on each one of these panels, it will display either the alignment the cross section or the profile view. So we go up to profile and here we have the add IPs and edit IPs options. So add IPs, we've got add IP by using your mouse or and, and snapping it or entering a change value. You can add IPs by grade and add IP by intersection. Those are the three most commonly used ones and also there's one add IP by TP. So if we go add IP firstly, and you move your mouse cursor over down near the profile view, you'll see there's a little triangle attached to the end of the cursor. So what you do, you zoom into the point, snap there, and it snaps automatically to chainage, zero, and it's got the IP level, which happens to be the natural surface level. We go OK to that, and it creates a design IP at the start of the job. So this Various ways one can do this, you can either just visually s sort of move your cursor down and assume a, a straight down to the uh, centre of the actual job. So if we're going to place one um, vertical curve within this job, so we say, right, let's place it here at chain is 210. OK. And then place another one right at the end of the job. And it's, what it's done is basically placed a IP on the end chainage leader line and sitting on the natural surface. Same it has done on the start, start point. So at this stage, all you've got is just uh, straight lines going from the start IP to the one that we placed in the middle to the end IP. So if we click on this uh, middle one here, IP, it'll come up with the IP details. It shows what the change is, which we had selected as 210 by the mouse. It's got a, a random IP level based on where it is placed on that leader line. And down here we have approach grade, departure grade. That's approach from the IP1 to IP2, the centre one. And the departure grade is from IP2 to the end of the job. And the algebraic difference is the difference between those two approach and departure grades. The maximum length is basically the maximum length of a vertical curve. That would be, that'll be for, the, for the whole job, virtually. So you can enter in a VC length by just typing in, say, uh, any uh, length that you want the vertical curve length to be. You can do it by K value, which is K is based on the length of the vertical curve divided by the algebraic difference. K equals L over A. And design speed. So if we select design speed, and remember we had a speed value of 75k, so if we pick, say, 
vertical curve type of symmetry, design speed of symmetry. The BC type is going to be a parabolic curve. You have two options there, parabolic or circular arc. Parabolic is the most commonly used. And the sight distance criteria is based on stopping sight distance. And these are in the Osroad standards for, for sight distance. You can either do it intermediate, overtaking or headlight. But most commonly used is the safe stopping distance. So if we go OK to that screen, using the design speed of 70 kilometres per hour, it has now placed a vertical curve which is nearly 279 metres long, based on that speed value. That's for safe stopping distance. So as you can see, it's quite a massive long curve in there. So uh, you can then go and move or modify that IP. If I move, go move IP, I can drag that up and down to visually sort of match it in with the natural surface at that point. Or if I move it to the left, you'll suddenly see, left or right, that there will be a red circle with a diagonal red line through it, meaning that you cannot go create the IP beyond that position because of the length of the vertical curve will exceed the start change and end change. So you just basically move that up and down wherever we are at the moment and that will then reposition that vertical curve profile. Now bear in mind that at this stage all we've got is the design profile and it all comes together once you create your templates and then once you create your templates the templates will be positioned on that profile design profile line and then you'd have to actually run volumes to uh, make sure that the balances of the cut and fill as per what you want. So that's one way, one method of actually creating your IP just by um, design speed. So if I select that IP and delete it, now we can also do add IP by grade. So add IP by grade, you need a start, uh, like a base IP at each end, so what we've got here. So we go add IP by grade, it says down the bottom of the screen there, select the base IP, so you position it over the first, op first one there, first IP, and it's asking for a chainage. So if we go to, say, chainage 210, so if I type in 210 as an example, and you'll see that the length will stay at, or will be sitting on chainage 210, but the grade is actually moving. So if I move, position this down a little bit more, and pick, say, right, uh, grade of minus, minus about 2.5, so if I go minus 2.5, and go OK, and then what it does is now joins up with the last IP. So now we have a, a, a approach grade of minus 2.5% and a departure grade of 6.13%. So that's one way of doing it is adding IP by grade from a base IP. If I delete that IP now, and we do add IP by intersection. So add IP by intersection will use both the, the start IP in the end IP for creating an intersection grading, intersection by adding the IP by intersection. So it says select the first IP, so I snap the first one, and then you input a grade. So we go minus 2.5, then it says select the second IP, and I'll pick, right, minus 5.8, minus 5.8%, and now it generates an IP at chainage 202 based on those intersecting grades, and that is the design IP level. And then you can go through and use the design speed or BC length or K value. So if I put in a BC length of uh, 200, based on that stopping distance, go OK, and it has now created a parabolic curve that is 200 metres long. Again, you can go through and select that IP and move it and adjust it up and down. But one, I would say that at this stage, just leave it as it is until you've got your templates and then you can compute your design from that and then balance your um, cuts and fills. 
So that's the end of this process.